Hey, how's it going? This is Computer Bread, and in this video, we are going to look at the lit code problem number 46 called permutations. This problem will serve as an introduction to backtracking. So, the description of this problem is quite simple. So, given a collection of distinct integers, return all possible permutations. So, we are given an array we call nums that will contain numbers like 1, 2, and 3, and we want to output all the possible permutations like 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2. So the description of this problem is quite simple, so we can start thinking about the solution. And so how can we build the permutations? And the best way to find out is to look at different examples. So let's start with one number, and let's say that this number is A. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. A is not a number, it's a letter. Well, nobody asks your opinion, okay? This is my video, I do whatever I want, I'm in control. So if I want to use A as a number, I use A as a number, okay? So if the only number we have is A, well, we don't really have anything to do. We can just put A. A is the only permutation. But if we have two numbers, A and B, we can start with A or with B. And then we can continue. If we start with A, we then choose B. And if we choose B, we can choose then A. And that's the only two permutation we can build. Now with three numbers, A, B, and C, we can start with A, or B or C, and then we can continue. If we start the permutation with A, we can choose B or C. Then for B, it's B, A or C. And finally for C, it's A or B. And then we just only have one remaining element for each permutation. So now let's try with 26 numbers. So like the previous example, we can start with A, then B, then C, then yeah, no, just kidding. You really thought I was going to do the 26th number? You think I've got that much free time? Hell no. So, yeah, let's get back to the example number three. And what we did was that we built a tree of all the possible solution. And when we build that kind of tree, we call it a state space tree. So whenever we are able to build a state space tree, and if we go back to the description of the problem, we saw that what we really want is all the possible permutations, all the possible solutions. Then when we have these two elements in a problem, this indicates that we are in the presence of a backtracking problem. So now let's talk about backtracking. In backtracking, we have what we call the three keys of backtracking. And when I say we, I'm talking about a certain YouTuber. And these three keys are the following. The first one is choices. We have a set of decisions we need to take. And the decision, the choice we make, are limited by a set of constraints. And we make these decisions in order to reach a goal. In the case of our problem, the different choices that we have is choose one number. This constraint is that we only can use one number and we can't reuse this number later. And the goal is to build a permutation. And with the three keys, we can define an algorithm, the backtracking recipe. So the backtracking algorithm can be defined by a recursive function that take a couple of arguments. One of them is an array containing all the different solutions we find. So what we want to do is build different solutions. And whenever we deal with recursion, the first thing to do is know when to stop. And A, we want to stop when we have reached our goal. And when the goal is reached, which means we've just built one solution, we found a solution, we add the solution to the array containing all the solutions. And then we just stop there. If the solution we are currently building is not done, then we need to keep building it. And the way we build it is by going 
all the different choice we can make. And if we can actually make this choice, this decision, if this decision is valid, then we can take it and then keep going. And we just recursively call backtrack. And once this is done, when this function is done, it means that we either have reached the goal or we can't actually build any more solutions. So we just undo this choice. Now let's try to apply this backtrack algorithm to our problem. So we are given as an input uh, the array nums that contain all the number we will have to use to make permutations. And the result array is a list of all the solutions. So res is already in the argument list, but we need to add nums to the list of arguments. Now let's talk about the goal. And the goal we want to reach is build a permutation. So we'll have to have a way to store the permutation. And when the permutation will be the same size, which means it will contain the same amount of number that the input nums, then the permutation will be finished. So we can just add this permutation to the result. And because we will need to keep track of the permutation we are currently building, we need to put it in the argument list. Now, to be able to, to build this permutation, we need to go through the choices we can make. And here, the choices we have to make is use a number. So the thing we have to do is loop through the nums array, like this. And now, the constraint is that the number we are choosing wasn't already used in the permutation. So did we already use nums index i? And there's two ways to remember if we already used this number. Here, the description of the problem states that we have distinct numbers. So we could use a hash map, or we can just use an array of booleans. And I think uh, the array of booleans is just as simple. So we, we are going to define an array called used, and used index i will be true if nums index i is used. Otherwise, it would be false. And because we defined a new array, we need to add it to the argument list. Now let's talk about the choices we have to make. The choices are just, well, we're just using this number. So we have to say that this number is now used. So we just put true this number. And once the backtrack will be done, we'll undo the choice. So we'll put it to false. And because we are building permutation, we actually need to add this number to the permutation. And when the backtrack is done, we remove it. And that's pretty much it. We just solved this problem. So let's take a look at the C++ implementation of this algorithm. So we have the result array, that's just a vector of a vector of int. Then we got the numbers, which is the input we got another vector that contained the permutation we are building, and then we have our array of views to know if we already used the number at index i. Then we check if we have reached our goal, which means we've built a permutation. If that's the case, we just add it to the result. Otherwise, we just keep building the permutation. So we got through the list of numbers. If it's not used, then we can choose it, take it, put it in the permutation, and keep building this permutation. Once it's done, we just undo it, and we're good. And if we look at the beginning, so what we give it, we just build an empty res vector of vectors, we init this used vector with false, and we create an empty permutation array. And we just give all of these arguments to our backtrack function. And we return the result. And if we submit, it just works. 
and we're done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.